I want to say uh, happy Mother's Day to the moms. Amen. In fact, let's give God praise for, for our moms this morning. Amen. Go ahead. Give God praise. Clap. I thank God for my dad. I do. Amen. I do. I thank God for my dad. I do. Yeah, you heard him mumble back there. Uh, all right. Today's Mother's Day. That's right. Today's Mother's Day. We we'll thank God for for our moms and and for them. them Chasing around after us, right? Chasing around. I'm talking about my mom. Chasing around after me when I was acting crazy in the streets. And I thank God for her. Dads are different, right? Dad will go to bed at night. He's a boy. He'll see him in the morning when he's hungry, you know? But I remember mom, she used to chase around after me. She did. I did a lot of crazy bad things. I did. And uh, I remember one day... I was hanging out where I wasn't supposed to be like 3 o'clock in the morning. Now I was like 14 years old, right? You ain't supposed to do that at 14. But I did. And uh, next thing I know, I went back over there. I was mad. It was, it was a bar. I was hanging out in the back shooting dice, you know? Come on. That's what you do when you're a boy. No, that's what, at least that's what I thought you did when you were a boy. And when I went back there, they were like, yo, man, you better. And these were like thugged out, hard knuckleheads. Said, yo, you better get out of here, man. I said, why? Your mom was just over here, embarrassed all of us. <laughs> I remember that. I was embarrassed. I ran home. But you know what? Uh, thank God for moms. Amen? Thank God for moms, right? I want to talk to you mothers this morning. I want to uh, help you understand that you're raising a godly leader. Now, here's the thing. You're raising a leader. The question is whether or not they become godly leaders. See the difference? All right? So if you're a mom, thank God for our mothers but I want to challenge you ladies this morning to think about the fact that you're raising a leader. The question is whether they're going to be a godly leader. You say, well, you know, I don't see it in them. Everyone is leading something. They are, yeah. If you're a father, you lead the home. If you're a mother, you lead the children. If you go to work, think about it. Every one of us impacts somebody else's life. We have influences over other people's lives, whether it's family or friends or aunts or uncles or cousins. So the truth is... You are leading at some level. The question is whether you're a godly leader. There's a difference. There's a difference. So for you mothers, just listen to what I'm about to say. You're raising a godly leader. Amen? I heard about a lady who, she said she got to the top of her career. She was a public speaker, graduated college. She became uh, wanted. Wanted, what I mean is she was desired by, by other professional places and businesses to come and speak. So she said her career was at the top. Her career had spun off to the top, and she was getting invites left and right to come and speak at different places, to do seminars. And, and she said her, her, uh, her day would consist of her getting dressed up, putting her makeup on, doing her hair, her nice high heels. She was very professional, and she would leave. That was most of her day. She said, sometimes I would have to leave, though, and travel different places for a couple of weeks at a shot. That's what she did. So she said as far as her career was concerned, it was at the top. Everything was turning out the way she wanted it to turn out. She said she got the nice little house, of course. She was married and got the kid and had the nice little house and all these different things. And she said, but one day she stood home and her son was there and, and she was eating cereal with her son at the breakfast table. And she's sitting down at the table and she's eating cereal. And her little boy, she said, my little boy looked at me with those brown eyes and he said, mommy, you look beautiful today. So she thought, she thought, well, you know, how can I look beautiful? I don't have my hair or my makeup on or my shoes or my suit on. So she said, baby, why do I look beautiful today? And, she, and he said, because today you're spending it with me. And she said at that moment, uh, she went and got on her knees and she prayed and she said, God. And she said she took her little appointment book where, where she was making money from. And she says, God, you know what? Um, let me get rid of all the things that I'm chasing and, and spend more time with my son. She realized at that moment she was being negligent to her son because she was so busy chasing. Chasing. So you're raising a leader. She called herself. She said, I was an absentee parent. I was a good parent, I thought, but I was absentee. 
I was absentee. All right? So I want to help you understand this morning, mothers, all right? It takes, it takes, first of all, courage to go against what everyone else is doing. You, you listening to me? It takes courage. I know people who think that either way, it's okay, it's no problem. I know people who think that if a mom stays home, she's less of a mom than if she goes to work. I know people who think that. And that is absolutely incorrect. Now, I'm not going to say she's more of a mom, but I am going to say it is a, a way to really impact your children. A lady years ago, one of my professors, she said she had to decide what she wanted to do because the world had taught her to have everything. That she had to have a career, have a house, clean house, do this, do that, have everything. And then she said she had an epiphany. One of my professors, she had an epiphany, she had realized, she said she had to realize it is better to have less stuff to spend time with your children than to have more stuff and be an absentee mom. But it takes courage. I'm not telling you to quit your job, because I know we have to work, and it's expensive in New Jersey. I get it, all right? I get it. But what I'm saying is, sometimes there's certain things you may have to give up so that you can spend more time with your children. And it takes courage. To, it takes courage to say, I'm going to spend time with my kid and make that a priority than to chase the things of the world. Can I get an amen? All right, Pastor, show me in the Bible, Exodus chapter 2. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, wanna, I want you to come with me this morning into the life of a woman named Jochebed. And how this woman, Jochebed, had courage. She had godly courage to do what God was telling her to do, to do the right thing. Are you listening to me? Exodus chapter 2, verse 1. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was beautiful, she hid him for three months. This woman is Jochebed. She had courage in the middle of an oppressive nation. She had courage in the middle of an oppressive nation. Now, if you know what's going on in Exodus, the children of Israel are in Egypt, and they're in bondage, and they're in slavery, and they're in captivity. I read that little verse about a man who finds a woman and gets married and then has children. All right, a man finds a woman and gets married and has children, and you say, what's the big deal? What kind of courage do you need for that? What kind of courage do you need for that? Well, because they're living in Egypt at the time where the children of Israel are in slavery and captivity. And what's going on at this time in history is they're killing the kids. They were killing the babies is what was going on. Now, Egypt, the Bible talks about Egypt is in, is in, uh, is in the word of God and is, is in history. A lot of times when we think about Egypt, we just think about all the bad stuff going on there. But for some reason, Egypt is there and it has a role to play in the children of Israel's life. But at this point in the children of Israel's life, it is oppressive and they're in slavery and they're in bondage. And it takes courage. Listen to me now. It takes a mother of courage who decides to make a difference and not live by what the world is saying, but to do what God is saying. Are you listening to me? Her name is Jochebed. That's her name. That's, that's, this is the story of Moses. And Moses' mother's name was Jochebed or Jochebed. And, and the name means Yahweh is glorious. This is what her name means. And I've said this years ago. I say it again. Names to us are nothing. You know, we just give somebody a name and it just means nothing. But back in that day, in that time, a name had power and had punch behind it. Her name, Jochebed, Moses' mother's name, was Yahweh is glorious. So now she's living, you're not listening to me. She's living in a, in, in a nation and in a time in history where they are killing the babies and it's oppressive. But she decides to get married and to have her baby and to hide him from an oppressive world. That took courage to do. When the government was telling her to get rid of him or kill him, she decided, no, I'm going to keep him and save him. That takes courage. I don't know if you know this, but in some places of the world today, you can have, in China especially, I heard, you can have men, male babies, but you can't have female babies. If you have a little girl, I think you can have one. After that, you have to kill them. But we don't realize the kind of world that we're living in. This, this 
for Yochebed was an oppressive time, and it took courage for her to get married and have her child. It took courage. It took courage for her. But her name means God is glorious. See, I tell you, I have imagination. I have to believe that every time somebody said, yo, Yochebed, what she heard was, God is glorious. See, you, you understand? Yochebed, how you doing today? Uh, God is glorious. Uh, Yochebed, what's going on in the neighborhood? She heard, God is glorious. See, the Bible doesn't, it, it's not stuttering. It's there for a reason. There's a man who found a woman and got married and didn't have children. Back up one chapter, they're killing the children. And Yochebed decided what? God is glorious. When other people don't want to have kids, I'm having them. You know, it used to be, it used to be that, that children were considered a blessing. And now today, they're almost considered a cursing. Uh, you know what they say today? They say today that there was a, uh, there was a little survey that went out in and, and, and the universities, and they actually said that the, the professionals and the people say today they don't want kids because kids are too rebel rebellious and too violent. And we say that's true. They're too rebellious and they're too violent. And I'm going to say it's true because parents ain't being parents, and that's why they're too rebellious and they're too, ve re re uh, too violent. You listening to me? So you wonder why the kids are messed up? Because the parents are messed up. And the parents are messed up because they ain't living according to what God says, but according to the world says. But it takes courage to decide, yo, Yochebed, God is glorious. Are you listening to me? And Yochebed, Moses' mom, when they were killing babies, decided she was going to get married and have babies and save her baby. Are you listening to me? We're living in that culture today. Where kids are considered to be a, a, an intrusion, an intrusion in our lives. An intrusion in our lives. People got all these theories. I'm going I'm I'm to I'm I'm hit you with something real quick, right? They got this view of abortion. Today, abortion has become a form of birth control. That's what that is. Now, if anyone has ever gone through that, my heart goes out to you. Amen. And if you need help, I'll help you through it. I'll pray for you. Amen. And we'll figure it out. Amen. Because God does forgive. Can I get an amen? amen. But, but when people say stuff like, well, you know, uh, uh, abortion in the first trimester, second trimester, third trimester, you listening to what I'm saying? F from God's, from, from the word, what God says in his word, God, God is the one who formed them in the mother's womb. Are you listening to me? And today they abort babies because it's an inconvenience for them. Not yoga bed. Not Yochebed. Why? Because she knew, she knew what God gave her was going to be a leader. And she knew that God was going to use that boy one day. It takes courage to be a mother today that decides, I'm going to follow what God says and not what the world is saying. It takes courage to keep that child when everybody else is saying, get rid of it. It takes courage to raise them in the church and under the things of God, when everybody else is saying, go live like hell and just get from the world and get things and live getting pleasure. It takes courage to decide, that's not how I'm going to raise my kids. It takes courage just to have children today. You listen to me? She had courage, I have to believe, because she saw a better future, future coming. Verse 2 says, she saw that he was beautiful. And I told you a couple weeks ago, that beauty wasn't just that, you know, babies, let's be real, babies are ugly. I, don't, I, mean, I mean, when they're first born, they're ugly. I love my kids to death, but when they, I was there when they came out, they look like Martians. Their heads are all messed up. So why did she see her baby as beautiful? Because the Bible actually teaches that she saw the glory of God over him. Every child, every human being has the glory of God over them. She saw, she had courage to get married and have a child. But when she saw her child, what she saw was God was on him. And what she saw was that the future was going to be better because of him. Are you listening to me? It takes courage, brothers and sisters, to go against what the world is saying and do what God is saying. Are you listening to me? People think, and we've had over the last few years, maybe I don't know, 10, 14, 15 years, we were trying to figure out, we've been trying to figure out why there's a discrepancy in our public school systems. So we created something, a Bush, I think, created something called the No Child Left Behind Act. 
They were trying to figure out what's going on, why, why in the inner cities there's like violence and stuff like that, and, and, and that's not even in the inner city now. Now it's all over the place, right? It's all over the place, and we had that shooting in, in, uh, in Florida recently, and, and kids, don't, kids are bringing guns into schools. You know what's funny? That shooting got all the publicity, but they actually said that that was only like the 18th or 19th shooting since the beginning of the year, because of course, they're not going to advertise what shooting's going on in the cities, right? So I'm just going to, you know, keep it real with you. Can I get an amen? But we think that what's going to help our kids is no child left behind. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's people, I think, with good intentions trying to help. But then they realize no kids were being left behind. So, okay, we had a nice little uh, uh, declaration. No child left behind, but some of them were being left behind. So then they came out with something called Every Student Succeed Act. Remember that? It's, 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 I think that's where we might be at now. It's like Every Student Succeed Act. So now No Child Left Behind, all No Child Left Behind did for me was cause me have to, it made me study all over again. That ticked me off. I tell you what, my kids would go to school and the teachers put it on the children and then the children put it on us. I remember I was studying, I'm going to be real, my wife was studying harder than me and trying to help my kids so they didn't get left behind. So they came out with this new thing called Every Student Succeed Act. And now uh, Jersey has something, got something called Common Core State Standards because they're trying to help figure out our kids, and they really believe that if you educate them in certain things, like reading, writing, and arithmetic, that's what's gonna, that's what's gonna change their life. But no, listen, it's not better teachers, textbooks, or curriculum that our children need most. It's better childhoods. And we will never see lasting school reform until we see parental reform. It's not, textbooks and teachers that we need. But we need parents to step up. We need moms, godly moms, Christian moms, to have courage and to realize they don't care what the world is saying. I'm going to raise my kid the way God says. Are you listening to me? I don't got a problem spanking my kids. That's right. It's going to be on Facebook and YouTube in a few minutes, and I don't care. I don't have a problem spanking my kids. Now, you ask them, they probably got spanked once in their 15, 17 years or whatever life, you know, because I understand you leave that for the end. You understand what I'm saying? But I, ex I expect certain things from them. Because the school's not raising my kids. The TV is not going to raise my kids. I'm going to raise them the way God says I'm supposed to raise them. You listen? But it takes courage to say you know what? Every now and then, if they need a little pop out, I'm gonna give it to them. All right? It takes courage to say. I I I had a, I had a parent tell me the other day that she, that the kid was out with the mom and the mom cursed at his mom and oh no, that ain't happening in my house. Can I get an amen? amen. But it takes courage to say. See, I know what I'm raising. What are you raising, Pastor? Godly children, yeah. and I'm raising them to respect life respect marriage, respect others, and most of all, above all that, respect Jesus Christ. It takes courage to decide, I'm going to raise them the way God has told me to raise them, and I'm not going to raise them the way the world's going to tell me to raise them. Are you listening to me? This father I heard in the summertime would have his kids out in the cornfield. This is what he did. Two boys. He had two boys, and he would have them out working in the cornfield. His neighbors thought he was too oppressive. And they were from church. They got together. And so they came to him and said, hey, listen, man, your kids are out here working, digging, chopping cane, chopping uh, corn, where everybody else's kid is swimming and having fun. What do you think you're raising? And he says, I'll tell you what. I know I'm not raising corn. I'm raising men. We need some more of that. I really do believe that our kids are too entertained, too spoiled, and we've sucked it up in the church, and we follow what the world is saying. Not Yochebed. Yochebed knew that God was glorious, and she knew she got married, she had a child, and she saw God's glory over that boy, and she decided to have courage, and she was going to keep him, and she had a plan for his life, and she was going to raise him the way God says. Are you listening to me? We're raising children not just to go off and get jobs. 
but raising them to be leaders and godly leaders. Are you listening to me? Yokebeh had courage. Something else, something else it takes, Mom, to raise godly leaders. Something else it takes. It takes faith. Look at verse 3. But when she couldn't hide him no longer, she got him a wicker basket and covered it over with tar and pitch. And then she put the, she put the child into it and set it among the reeds by the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to find out what would happen to him. Let me tell you what faith is not. I've been trying to say this for a while, what faith is and what faith is not. Faith is not you believing something hard enough so that it can come true. Let me say that again. Faith is not you believing something hard enough so it can come true. For example, all right, uh, you have relations, uh, you get pregnant. I don't care how much faith you got that the baby's going to go away. The baby's coming. Unless you abort it, and I know that's not what we, how we roll. Amen? You can have all the faith in the world, but the truth is, that baby's coming. So faith is not you believing in something hard enough so it can come true. That's not faith. Faith, I told you last week, you can believe all you want, you're going to get a good job. I had a young man tell me how he was sitting around the house praying that the phone would ring. And then when I asked him, did you go and fill out applications? Uh, did you do a resume? Uh, are you getting training? No, I don't need that. I got faith. Boy, you got dumbness. You ain't getting a job. Faith is stepping out and believing God to work out the end results. That's faith. Well, prove it, Pastor. Jochebed hit her child. She had courage to go against the world. But then the point came when she realized that she had to let him go. She put him in a basket. She covered it with tar. She sent him down the, down the river. And now the Bible says that his sister stood at a distance to find out what would happen. Faith is doing what God tells you to do and then leaving the results up to him. I got to say that because I think a lot of false teaching has crept into the church today. And we think faith is sitting in a circle, believing it hard enough. And that's not faith. That's not faith. That's wishful thinking. What faith is, is doing your part and then leaving the results to God and then trusting that God is going to work it out. Why? Because you're his child. That's why. And he's going to work it out. Listen, not your way, but his way. And his way is always better than your way. Can I get an amen? Yochebed had courage. Go ahead. And Yochebed had faith. She had faith. She let that. Do you understand? Do you understand? How much faith this woman had to have to put her baby that was beautiful in a basket and float him down the river. If you know anything about that river, there's hippopotamuses and crocodiles and all these things. She doesn't even show up. She sends his sister to watch. I think because she, didn't, she probably couldn't, she wouldn't have been able to handle watching her baby float down the river. Brothers and sisters, our job is to have courage to raise them the right way. And then faith. <laughs> faith. That they're going to do what we told them. And sometimes they don't. And it's painful. But our God is good. And I believe with all my heart, stop looking on the outside. You listening to me? If you raise him the right way, and I know God has children, not grandchildren. I know that. But there's, there's no way that I believe that I raised these kids in the church, in the pastor's house. Oh, yeah, they're going to they're gonna dip to the right and the left a little, a little. And, they, and, 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 and they're going to get beat up a little. But I believe I'm going to float them down the Nile. Mothers, you're floating them down the Nile. And you got to believe and have the faith to know that God is going to work it out. Faith is believing in God for the results. Not your results, his results. You're, you're listening to me. 
It says the sister stood at the distance to see what will happen. It takes faith. It took faith to say, send my baby girl to college. It did. It takes faith. Funny how God works, though, right? I sent her to college. Thank God for um, watching. And she helped us uh, navigate. Well, I sent her to college. Then she wanted to go to New York. That was worse. <laughs> I took faith, you know? Take courage. Faith for both of us. I know it's Mother's Day, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm all right. It, that was hard for me. Amen? And then they helped her with the subway. They gave her a map. Now she goes from Penn Station to, I still don't like it. I still don't like it. But I got to have faith and trust God. You know, if I feel the pain, I can't imagine what my wife is. You know, it's true. She carried her for nine months. I ain't do nothing. Well, I did the beginning. That's it. All right? <laughs> All right. Moses' sister watched to see what would happen. I can't imagine Jochebed's pain and letting that boy, but don't forget her name, God is glorious. God is glorious. Are you listening to me? There's been a few other mothers who had enough faith to let their children go. Remember the story of Hannah? Hannah was a woman who couldn't have children. And one day, and her husband said the dumbest thing. One day they're eating, and she's crying because in that time, children were a blessing, and it was a sign that if you gave birth to children, that God's favor was over you. So she was crying. Plus, in those days, to give you another side note, your children was your social security. Right? That's how you got your monthly check. You got to have children. Amen. And I'm trying to get me some monthly checks. So that's an Isaiah better get some good jobs. Can I get an amen? All right. But she was crying. The Bible says she was crying. They sat down to eat, and she was crying because she didn't have children. And then the husband, knowing why she was crying, he had the nerve to say, listen to this fool. Am I not better than, than, than children? I'm paraphrasing. Right? And I know every woman's going to be like, no. <laughs> You ain't better than children. She went to the temple, the church one day, and Eli was outside the church. She comes in, and, and what the Bible teaches is she began to pray. He thought she was drunk, Eli, because she prayed with so much passion and with anguish. She wanted to be blessed by God with children. Listen to what she says. This is her prayer. She vowed. O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. She understood that your children, 18, 19 years, it takes courage to raise them in the church. It takes courage to teach them the word, but you got to have faith. And, and, and the truth is... Um, there's a point where you got to let them go. And you got to trust God as they're floating down the Nile. And there's crocodiles and rhinoceros and hippopotamuses. That's going to work out. She, she said, God, I know whatever you give me is yours. What a prayer. We don't think this way. I know we don't. We don't. We don't think this way. I don't. It's hard for me. I got to remind myself. Those are God's children. Right? I gotta remind myself. That's why one of the reasons why we have children dedications is a reminder to the parents that they belong to God and you're giving them back to the one who gave, it to, gave them to you. Are you listening? How about Jesus' mother? Right? How about Jesus' mother? Spirit, the angel comes and tells her, you're going to have a son, but it ain't your son. You're just, you just carrying him temporarily. Imagine... Uh, Jesus' mother. And, and, and her knowing and your son's going to die for the sins of the world. At some point, Mary, I believe, absolutely had to say, this is your child, God. That takes faith. Denzel Washington was talking about the actor Denzel Washington. He was talking about how he grew up, his mother and father divorced when he was young. He goes, his father wasn't really involved in his life. And then when they divorced, he was less involved. But Denzel said he was walking the streets, hanging out with his friends, doing what 
what, what boys do who don't have a father in the house. Right? And his mom, he said, had to make the decision. Because she had an opportunity to send him away to boarding school or to keep him in the hood. And he said, the, 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 the hardest decision but the best decision my mom did was to send me away to boarding school. Do you know how much faith that must have took for his mom? For Jesus' mom? Think about it. For, for Hannah? For Jochebed? To float that boy down the river. And to see what happens. Are you listening to me? I don't like that my daughter goes to New York. I can't stop it either. I don't think I can. Amen. I know I'm not going to like when she brings that boy into my house. I know I'm not going to like that. I know I'm not going to like that. I don't know how I'm going to act. But I got to have faith. Moms, it takes faith, right? It takes faith. It takes courage. It takes faith. I trust God's going to work it out. Right? And we got courage and we got faith to know that we follow God and we trust in him. They're going to be godly. And they're going to be godly leaders. Are you listening to me? Okay. So what's, what's the result, Pastor? If I got faith, if I got courage, what's going to be the results? Let's, let's look at what happened in Yochebed's life. Verse 5. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the Nile. And with her maidens walking along the side of the Nile... And, she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid, and she brought it to her. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the boy was crying. And she had pity on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, should I go and call a nurse for you from among the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go ahead. So the girl went and called the child's mother. And then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. And so the woman took the child and nursed him. The child grew up, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she named him Moses and said, because I drew him out of the water. So it takes courage to raise him the right way. It takes faith to believe God for the results. But when you believe God for the results, there's going to be a reward. Are you listening to me? First thing that happened was this. It blows my mind. She hit him to keep him from getting killed. She had courage to have him, courage to hide him, courage to teach him. Levi, right, was her husband. And then faith to let him go. And now he ends up, you don't listen, you're not listening. He ends up protected in plain sight from the ones that were trying to kill him. You don't, you're not hearing what I'm saying, all right? I'm trying to tell you, moms, when you have faith and courage, God is going to reward you. This boy floats right down into Pharaoh's house. And God moves on the daughter of Pharaoh, moves on the daughter of Pharaoh. Now she says, I know it's a Hebrew. But I have pity on him, and now I'm going to protect him. Are you listening to me? When you trust God, he not only works it out, he works it out better than you can work it out. When you have faith in God, he not only works it out, he works it out beyond what you think he should work it out. Not only was he safe, you're not listening to me. He was safe under his enemy's nose, right? Are you listening to me? They went and got his mom and paid her. See, you don't hear me. I know the God that I serve, all right? I'm trying to tell you, if you got faith and courage, God can work it out, and he works it out better than you can ever imagine. Not only was he safe, God moved that lady to the point, that daughter of Pharaoh to the point where they went and got the mom, 
and now they paid the mom to raise the child. You don't hear what I'm saying. I'm trying to tell you, brothers and sisters, God is good. And when you have faith and you have courage and you believe, he's going to work it out. And he works it out better than you can ever imagine. Not only is he safe right under the Pharaoh's nose, now mom gets paid to raise her son. Are you listening to me? What a reward that is. What a reward that is. I heard, uh, uh, I got this little thing, King George, when he was talking to the people of England during the time of, 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 of uncertainty, they said people were uncertain of what was going on uh, in, in, in the nation. And he gave a speech, and this is what he said. I'll try to explain it a little bit. He said to the man at the gate, it was New Year's Eve, he said to the man at the gate of the year, metaphor, right, the man at the gate of the year, give me a light. So, so that I, I might walk safely into the unknown. They wasn't sure what's was going to happen. The New Year's was coming in and the whole nation was a mess. And he said, he, it's a metaphor. He said, give me, a, give, me, give me a light that I might walk safely into the unknown. And he told somebody this. And the guy said to him, go out into the darkness. Put your hand in the hand of God. And it should be to you safer than the light and better than the unknown. You don't hear what I'm saying. He said, we didn't know what was going on. Give me a light so I can, I can walk safely in the unknown. And the guy said to him, put your hand in God's hand. Let it be dark, and you don't need to know, because God's going to work it out. Are you listening to me? If you got courage, moms. If you got faith, moms, God's going to work it out, and God's going to reward you. What a powerful story to see. Moses ends up right in the enemy's house. He floated right down into the, that, right into the enemy's house. And now mom gets paid to raise her kid. And the, that's what happens when you have faith. And that's what happens when you have courage. That's what happens when you live according to what God says. Are you listening to me? I know, all right? Being a mom, moms, are, obviously, they're different than dads. We know that. I'm trying to encourage you moms to trust God and have faith and he's going to reward you. Are you listening to me? Yahweh is glorious. That's her name. Remember I told you her name? Yochebed means God is glorious. I'm sure it kept ringing in her head. God is glorious. God is good. God is able. Are you listening to me? God is a rewarder of those who seek him. Are you listening to me? The Bible talks about an act. Moses and, and, and the blessing of being raised in Pharaoh's house. So not only was he safe, mom got paid. God is so good. God is so good. The Bible says, and Moses was instructed in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and he was mighty in his words and deeds. He was safe, mom got paid, and Moses got a free education, the best education. <laughs> you know how good God is? I told you, I work with these kids. One of the things I'm always trying to do is encourage them. That's the number one thing I try to do, encourage them. It's really, it's really I can't imagine Right, because my parents are still here bothering me. So, you know, I can't imagine not having your parents in your life. But these kids come 16, 17 years old, and the parents are like, um, I hate to say it, losers. I got this one kid with me now. I had to yell at him yesterday. I felt bad afterwards, but that's, that's another story. And dad lives in a, in a shack because he's a drug addict. And mom decided to get a young boyfriend, so they abandoned him. I, I, he got me to talk to. Amen? He's, he's got me to talk to. 17 years old. But he got a letter this week. He's finished, just graduated high school, and he got a letter this week. I've been trying to encourage him. From Georgian Court University, 
I said, how did that happen? He says, I don't know. One of my teachers told me to fill out this thing and send some, some my scores in. So he got a letter this week. From, that's right. That's right. From Georgia, Georgia Court University gave him a full ride to the university. And I said, I said, Brandon, just listen, keep, keep, keep faith in God. But he, see, before he got to me, though, God is so good. Before he got to me, I found out he got a little friend named Tito from Long Branch. This white boy got a friend named Tito from Long Branch that plays in his youth group. And Tito's been telling him, trust God. You listening to me? God is so good. Are you listening to me? Moms, listen. Have faith. Have courage. God's going to work it out. God's going to work it out. When I, I look at this, what a powerful story. He's safe, mom gets paid, and now Moses gets the best education you can possibly get for free. Did you hear me? The way us Puerto Rican like it, for free. Can I get an amen? For free. Amen now. What blessing. You have faith. You have courage. It, it, there's going to be some dark times there. Amen, Nitz, right? There's going to be some dark times there. Sometimes you got to let them go down the river. Amen? But that's all right. God's going to reward you in the end. Just keep trusting, keep having courage, keep believing, and God's going to reward you in the end. Are you listening to me? All right, three things I'm going to share with you real quick, and I'm going to close off in prayer so you can celebrate your Mother's Day. Amen? This guy named George Barner, he wrote a book, and his book, he talked about three, three dominant approaches to parenting. His, these are the three approaches today. The first one He's a Christian, George Barner. At least we think we, he is, right? He said, one way to, to parent your child, he called it the path of least resistance. That means you let them do whatever they want to do, and you don't want to get involved in their life because you live in your life, and you want to do your thing, so you just let them go. He goes, that's one way you can raise them. All right? And I, I don't want to tell you what's going to come out of that, right? Another way to raise them, he said, is trial by error. I know people that way. They're like, well, we really don't know, and we, we got to figure it out as we go, and we're just learning as we go. That's another one to raise them. Here's, now, here's, here's the last way you can, you can raise them. The, the last way you can raise them, he called it a revolutionary approach. That's when you raise them by the word of God. This way takes more work. Raising them by the word of God. Raising them to know Jesus Christ. Raising them to know church is important. Raising them to know to read the word and to pray. That takes more work. But which one do you think is going to bring the greatest reward? The revolutionary approach. I already told you, you're raising a leader. The question is whether you raise a godly leader, but you're raising one. And to raise a godly leader like Yokobe, it takes courage, it takes faith. But it's the only one that brings a reward. Are you listening to me? It's the only one that brings the reward. So I'm going to challenge you mothers. I'm going to thank you mothers. And I'm going to challenge you mothers not to give up. Keep preaching to them. Keep telling them, well, you know what the Bible says. Even when they're like, oh, I don't want to hear it. Tough. Yes, that's right. In my house, you're going to hear it. You know what the Bible says. You know what we told you when you were young. You keep, keep doing it. Keep pushing it. Keep being revolutionary. That's the one that's going to be a godly leader. Are you listening to me? Have faith, have courage, and wait for the rewards. Because it's going to come. Can I get an amen? It's going to come. Give God praise. Give God praise.